welcome to our um, June 2017 version of GL's monthly webinar. We try to do one once a month, and um, this month we have an exciting topic. Uh, the title is Automated Mobile Device Quality of Service Testing, where we're going to focus on voice, data, and video testing in the mobile environment, wireless environment. My name is Matt Yost. Uh, I'll be joined by colleagues uh, Sanjeev Kulkarni and Rob Bashevsky. Rob will be doing most of the technical component of this webinar, and he is a uh, senior manager here at GL Communications, uh, and he oversees the development of the products that we're going to be focusing on today. Uh, just a quick overview of GL Communications. If you're not familiar with us, we've been, we were founded in 1986, so we've been around for a little while. We are located in the U.S. Uh, we're in Gaithersburg, Maryland, so on the east coast of the United States. We basically consist of two divisions. Uh, one of them is a consulting services division, and one of them is a uh, test and measurement products division, so software and hardware products in the um, telecom test arena. So those, those have uh, expanded over the years. The products have expanded over the years, um, got started with TDM products in the T1E1 world, and we've expanded into IP, voice over IP, wireless domains. Um, basically, uh, sort of a theme of our products across the board um, is the visualization, the ease of use. They're all Windows-based products. Um, well, 99% of them are. And um, we, we specialize in sort of um, easy to use, can be used by uh, a guy in the lab or a technician out in the field. They're portable, and we think they're cost-effective. So that's a little background on our company. Um, to get into a little bit more about sort of where we have our products, um, and we'll, we'll be diving, obviously, into the wireless domain today with mobile devices uh, and the products surrounding that. But just to get started on sort of where we, we've been over the years, uh, again, we started in the TDM, so TDM domain with T1 and E1 products, T3 products, things of that nature. So we also uh, consist of sort of simulation products and analysis products, so non-intrusive, intrusive testing products. Um, with that, we transitioned into a uh, little bit higher speed things, so we progressively went into OC3, OC12, and then we kind of took that knowledge from the TDM world and transitioned again to IP and voice over IP. So we had developed a library of algorithms and test methods and so forth, and over the years there, we, we've moved into the IP world, of course, like everyone else. So we've got a whole slew of IP products, um, from IP data testing products to voice over IP quality analysis products and things of that nature. So at, all along the way there as well, we have uh, had a focus on voice and on voice algorithms and quality of service with voice, as well as data, but voice was, was, was involved. So that sort of naturally led us to the wireless domain, and we have uh, now a, uh, a test suite of products that can um, evaluate wireless networks and wireless devices. And you'll kind of see that, that there's a theme here to sort of how we do that, and we're sort of uh, network independent uh, in the wireless domain because we're a true end-to-end -end tester. But uh, we'll, we'll get into those details here shortly. Um, just quickly, uh, we're headquartered, like I mentioned earlier, in Gaithersburg, Maryland, in the United States. We do have two branches, um, offices that, that GL runs in Bangalore, India, and in Shanghai, China. We have representation across the globe. Um, um, there's, there's even a lot more than any that is even mentioned here. So we have a lot of sales reps and so forth, local support in different parts of the world. So let, just, let's go ahead and get into the webinar here a little bit. Um, uh, we'll talk about mobile communications and the network for voice data and video. Um, the first slide is a little bit more general than that, and then we'll dive into it. Um, I know we're focusing on mobile networks today, but uh, this graphic shows a little bit 
of a, a different view on how our products, you're going to see our products being presented here. Our products are sort of end-to-end -end quality testers for voice and data videos, and video is included in that. And uh, we're talking today mainly about mobile networks and wireless networks, but there's, this graphic just depicts you know, different endpoints in a, in a network. It may be relevant to you because you know a mobile call a lot of times terminates at the PSTN at an analog phone or at a VoIP phone in an office. So we can we can do mobile to mobile testing. We can do mobile to analog. We can do mobile to traditional uh, PSTN testing. We can do mobile to IP testing. We can do those types of things. So we just wanted to show that briefly here uh, at the beginning. And as we dive in here to the wireless networks. I have a couple slides that show different wireless networks. And a question is usually asked to us, you know, which network do you support? And it's a good question, but you're going to find out throughout our presentation today that um, the answer to it is yes, we support it. And the reason is, uh, as I mentioned, we are at the endpoints. So we're we're testing the true customer experience. We, we interface at the mobile device. So we don't care if it's a 2G network. We don't care if it's a 3G network. Um, it's nice to know during the testing so that you can keep track of your scores across different networks. And you know that's, a, that's more of a test uh, scenario sort of log point. But from our perspective, from our test equipment perspective, we're interfacing at the mobile device we're not concerned if it's a 2G network, if it's a 3G network, if it's a 4G network, if it's a 5G network, if it's a 8G network or whatever. It doesn't matter to us. Um, we'll dive into how that, and Rob will get into very specifically how we interface to the devices, and you'll, you'll get a flavor for, for why that's the case here. So 2G, 3G, yes, we do support. Uh, uh, Later, you know, some of the later things here, uh, most recently 4G, voice over LTE, voice over Wi-Fi network. The answer to that is yes, we support it with our products. Uh, again, it's an endpoint. We treat it as an endpoint. The network is, um, is, is what you may be testing, but to us, the endpoint is the device. So we interface at the device level via Bluetooth, via you know, four wire connection and so on. So you'll see that here. So yes, we do support 4G voice over LTE and Wi-Fi networks or voice over Wi-Fi networks. Last slide on that sort of same theme here is do you, are you into 5G? Yes, 5G um, even, and with 4G, there, there's been some emphasis on, you know, maybe getting into wideband codecs and super wideband and so forth. So that is a relevant thing for our test equipment. We have to support that, and we do. So we have the ability in the voice testing domain to to do um, wideband testing for, for voice and voice over LTE and 5G. So we have that built into our products. Again, not to mention it too much, Rob will get into very specifically how we're doing that and what we do support at our product level there. But I wanted to give you an overview um, to set that up a little bit. So on, my, um, on this slide, I, I think we threw it in here just to kind of give you an overall view of how we architect our test equipment. It can be, our test equipment is very flexible, and we've got, like I mentioned earlier, we've got lab rat, rats that are, you know, back in your research and development lab that are maybe testing a very, very specific feature of a mobile device. Um, our products can, can, can exist in that domain. Our products can, can exist in the domain that I'm kind of showing here, which is we've deployed them throughout the world, throughout a country, and they're being treated as sort of a probe, an unmanned probe out there, which is controlled centrally by a central system, which you see at the bottom of the, the screen here. And these guys can be running um, scripts, routines to intrusively test the network, 
do different things from data testing, video testing, voice testing as we're showing on the screen. And all of that data and all of those results can be sent back to a central system. Okay, and we're displaying all of that and we're mining that all of that data. We're putting it in a database and we're mining it and showing it to you as a user, as a, as a test administrator in a sense, through a web interface. You'll get to see all of those, those nice screens as we move forward, but that's general architecture of how we would deploy multiple probes, test equipment probes in a network to do these mobile testing uh, scenarios for voice, video, and data. So I think that's just a general screen there to give you an overview of sort of how we architect our test solution. We're going to get uh, now very specifically and deeper into how we're doing things. And for that, I'm going to pass the ball here to Rob Bashevsky, who again is our, our lead development guy on the uh, and oversees all the development for the, these products. So Rob, let me give you the screen. Hello. Um... Hopefully everybody can see my screen. Um, so I'm going to get, uh, as Matt mentioned, I'm going to get deep into the actual testing of um, of the uh, the mobile devices. So basically, mobility testing, including support for voice, data, and video. Um, the 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 core of this is in the center of this slide, our uh, B Quad Probe HD. Um, which is basically um, a couple products in one. It's it's our uh, VQuad software and our dual UTA uh, hardware combined into a single unit with a PC and everything else. Very portable unit, um, and this can control your mobile devices for uh, for setting up calls. Uh, confirming the call is set up, and then performing voice quality analysis along with um, a bunch of other things like delay measurements and signal level and noise level, uh, things like that. Um, now this unit, uh, you can, there's two different ways you can, you can set this up. You can either have a unit like this or you can have a PC con with our WTA connected to the PC. But this unit is very nice because um, uh, it's portable. It can go in the car, go on a bus. Um, uh, you can get power directly from the the uh, uh, the vehicle. You can set up a battery for this. Um, uh, you can put it in a lab. It's nice because nobody knows what it is. It's just a black box, and so nobody's going to touch it. Um, and what this has is it has a bunch of interfaces. Uh, to connect to different types of devices like two-wire analog, so we can be a mobile or, or a, a regular phone, a landline phone, or a phone connected to an ATA or something. Uh, we can also be just a headset to anything, any device, um, or we can connect to a mobile phone. And connecting to a mobile phone, we can do that two different ways. We can either connect to a mobile phone via Bluetooth, so we would be a headset, a Bluetooth headset to the mobile phone, or we can connect to a mobile phone via a, uh, a headset cable. So as Matt mentioned, we are the, uh, the endpoint, the, the, um, uh, the, the user experience or the customer experience. So we are connecting to the phone. The phone is connecting to the, to the network, whichever way it does, whether it's voice over LTE or uh, 3G or Wi-Fi or 5G or what have you. Uh, but we're just connected to the phone, and then we control the phone and also perform the voice testing. So with Bluetooth, as I mentioned, we are a headset to the phone. And as a headset, we can uh, place a call, answer a call, disconnect a call, we can even find out information about the phone, such as signal strength, uh, battery level, um, what network we're on, uh, things like that. And that can all be part of your test. And that can all be part of your results. So as you're doing your test, uh, Matt mentioned that, well, you can be on a 3G network or a 4G network or a 5G network. 
well, we can actually tell you which network you're on by just getting that information from the phone. And that could be part of that specific test. Um, now, also with the Bluetooth, you can send a record voice. And, uh, and, and that's being done for, uh, for voice quality analysis, as well as um, for, uh, for delay measurements and other, other, other metrics. Now, another way to connect is using a headset cable. This is a, a brand new product of ours. Uh, we've, we've always had headset cables to the phones, but we came out with this new thing called a, um, a um, smartphone ACC, or automated call control cable. So this is connecting to the phone, and using um, the dual UTA, we can now control the phone through this cable. So not just pass audio to the phone, but also control the phone. Uh, that means we can answer an incoming call, we can reject a call, we can disconnect a call, and we can also place a call by invoking Siri or Google Voice on the phone and then sending a, a voice file directly to the phone saying, call this number. Um, we can even say, uh, get or, or send SMS, because we're now invoking Siri or Google Voice. Uh, we're making it even easier to do this by um, uh, within the VQuad software uh, by having a, um, a text-to-speech utility. So you can just, in your script, say, uh, write down call 555-1212, and then invoke Siri and send that file. Uh, you don't have to worry about creating the voice file to send. You don't have to worry about having that available. It'll just do it on the fly. So it's very easy to use, very flexible, um, and supports um, full control. Now, the other thing we have here is a GPS. Uh, so with the GPS, um, we use that for two different things. First of all, we use it for the lat long, for, the, um, uh, for getting coordinates. And we're going to stamp everything with coordinates. So later on, I'll show you how you can map everything on Google Maps. All your results, color-coded, pass, fail, what have you. Um, uh, the other thing we use with the GPS is timing. And I'll show you that later on where we're using that for one-way delay measurements between two different sites. So we need a time reference, and we use the GPS as that time reference. A, a prime uh, um, reason for using this uh, solution is for voice quality. And um, uh, so during an established call, you can uh, send and record voice over the call. Uh, the, the two ends can be on the same unit. They can be on two different units. Uh, they can be between mobile and mobile, between mobile and two-wire, or anything you want. It doesn't matter. Each side is fully independent. And, um, and by the way, the dual UTA does have two fully independent sides, so you can run two devices at the same time. Uh, but within a call, you can have any, uh, any two uh, sides uh, controlled uh, for sending and receiving voice. In fact, um, we can even do three-way calls or conference calls and perform voice quality over the entire uh, conference. So one guy is sending voice and everybody else is receiving voice, and we're going to analyze everything against what was sent. And we can even round-robin that so that each participant in the conference call can perform this same test. So um, our voice quality uses the Polka algorithm, which is the latest uh, out of the ITU, ITU 863. Um, and uh, Polka, the good thing about Polka is uh, it's, uh, it was really designed for the, uh, the wideband networks. So uh, we also support the legacy PESC uh, algorithm. Uh, PESC was very good for narrowband uh, networks, and in fact, Polka does support narrowband as well. Um, it basically will resemble what the what the PESC does, what the PESC scores are, but for wideband and for uh, super wideband. So wideband would be in the uh, 8,000 hertz range, and super wideband would be up to the uh, 24 hertz range, uh, 24,000 hertz range. Um, the uh, the Polka algorithm is very good with those uh, with with wideband and super wideband and our 
dual UTA and our V-Quad system does support uh, narrowband, wideband, and super wideband. So with the VQT, you're going to, as I mentioned, send and record voice. And the recorded voice file is going to go down to the VQT software, uh, where it's analyzed against the, uh, the original reference file. And you're going to get a MOS score, mean opinion score. Along with the MOS, you're going to get a bunch of other algorithms as well. And the VQT can run in a fully automated mode. Um, and it can also be remotely controlled. So you don't, really don't have to worry about it. You can set it, and it'll just run. So uh, out of the VQT score, you're going to, as I mentioned, there, there's fully automated measurements. You're, and uh, you're also going to get a bunch of results, including the MOS score. You're going to get signal level gain, noise level gain, jitter. Um, you're going to get the E model with the, uh, that's for narrow band. Uh, and wideband only. It doesn't work with the uh, with the super wideband. Um, and um, we're also going to get delay measurements with this. So a lot of things will come out of this uh, out of this algorithm. Uh, and the reason for that is so you're going to get a score. Let's say your score in this case was 4.02. Well, that's a pretty good score, um, but uh, it's not a perfect score. So now you want to figure out, well, why wasn't it a perfect score? What was the reason? So all this other information that you're getting, in this case, you're going to see a, a speech level gain of negative 17 and a noise level gain of negative 17. So probably your, your levels were, were very low, and maybe the noise floor was increasing, and, um, and that's why your score was dropped a little bit. But all, this other, all these additional information that you're going to get uh, it's basically to give you insight as to why your score was dropped. Uh, and then we also, um, we're going to rate your, your, your results. So in this case, it's showing an excellent. And this is all user definable. Um, uh, we give you some, uh, some default uh, settings, but uh, the ratings will come out as excellent, good, fair, and poor. And then you can uh, query on these and basically figure out, well, how many excellence that I have, how many uh, 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 pours that I have. So another um, aspect of the, of, the, um, of the VQuad solution and of the testing is delay measurements, uh, which is very important. It's actually very important in the voiceover LTE world. What's the delay between... Um, uh, um, your phone and the and the other phone from one device to the other device, and we do this uh, using um, a delay measurement within the from from each V quad probe. Uh, we're basically sending a voice file, recording the voice file at the exact same time, and then analyzing the recorded voice file against the sent voice file to provide a very accurate delay measurement. Uh, in the case of the two devices on the same VQuad probe, uh, we, we actually just use an internal clock, so it's very easy to do. If the two devices in this case are uh, separated, then uh, as mentioned before, we're going to use GPS. And the GPS will give us a time reference of each device, and we can then start, uh, start this, send and start to record at the exact same times. In addition to one-way delay, we can also do round-trip delay measurements. Now, if you don't have, if you have two devices that are separated and you don't have GPS on the two devices, then really your only option is to do the round-trip because round-trip, you don't need anything. On, on round-trip, what we're actually doing is on the far end, we're putting the uh, device in a loopback mode. And on the near end, we're doing a send-record at the same time. Uh, so we already know what time we sent the file. We know when we get the file back. Uh, we know what the delay is, um, and we can figure out uh, what the round trip delay. A, um, in a VQuad script, you can actually set up to do a one-way delay, in both directions, a round trip delay, send the record voice. All these different measurements can be performed over each call that you make. So very flexible. And as I mentioned, the, um, uh, 
the V quad probe is a very portable unit. Um, in this case, we're actually showing a dual UTA with a laptop, but you can actually have the probe, very portable unit, sitting in a car or sitting in a bus or sitting on a train or wherever you want to put it. Um, and uh, as mentioned, you can get the power directly from the vehicle or you can set up a battery or you can have a battery just as the backup in case the car goes off for a period of time. Um, and uh, just run the tests in... Um, um, in an automated fashion. In fact, the, uh, the VQuad uh, solution includes remote capability, so you can just put the box in a vehicle, um, uh, get a driver, the driver is going to be driving around, he doesn't have to worry about the box, and then you can control this completely from a central system. So no need to, uh, um, to have an extra person in the vehicle, no need to, um, to uh, uh, quantify what's going on directly at the vehicle. You can do all that from some central location or from anywhere, actually. And all the, so all the results from the test are going to go down to a central system as well into a database where you can then access and query the results and filter the results and, and output the results. And I'll get more into that a little bit later. Now, there's a, um, there's a new uh, uh, product that, that we're putting out. Um, it's basically performing the, uh, the VQT testing directly from a mobile phone. Uh, this requires a, a rooted, Android phone. We can only use certain phones uh, at this point. Uh, but on the Android phone, we, we have an app. It goes on the Android phone, and it supports um, uh, uh, placing a call or answering a call and sending recording voice. And then and all the recorded voice gets transferred back to the central system where VKT analyzes it. Um, and then puts it into the database, puts the result into the database. Now, the app can be run manually directly from the phone. So from the phone, you can say, okay, place a call, you know, establish a connection, and then send or record voice. Um, the phone can also be run uh, remotely from a VQuad script. So the VQuad script would control the phone. Wherever the phone is, it doesn't matter as long as the phone has an Internet connection. And the VQuad script would tell the phone to uh, place a call or send voice or record voice or what have you. Um, and, uh, and all the results are still stamped with GPS. It should, it's using the GPS of the phone itself. So this is a product that uh, we're pushing out, and it'll be just a uh, sort of a, uh, an option to, uh, to perform a voice quality on, on devices that you may not be able to get the VQuad probe in that area. Yeah. Yes. Uh, this is with regard to the Bluetooth. Uh, how are you using the Bluetooth to assist with testing? Uh, actually, are you controlling the phones only, or are you transmitting the voice using the Bluetooth? That's a good question. So with the Bluetooth, <clears throat> the, um, the Bluetooth is connected to the phone as a headset. So, uh, so anything that a Bluetooth headset can do on a phone, we can do. So that means controlling the phone, um, as well as performing the voice, as well as sending a recording voice. Um, and, uh, and, and in addition to that, we can also send other commands to the phone to, as I mentioned, get signal strength or get, um, um, get uh, the network type or things like that. Now, a lot of people might ask, well, when you're connected via Bluetooth, is the um, is the audio that good? Because it's a it's a um, wireless connection. We've done a lot of tests with this, and um, our Bluetooth is a is a low powered uh, a chip, and um, uh, it uh, so your phone has to be relatively close to the unit. And when we do that, um, when we put the phone relatively close within a couple of feet. Um, we have no degradation of the voice. So we've done tests where we run Bluetooth and we've run wired uh, a headset tests 
on the same call, the same phone, and we're able to do that. We're able to actually turn off the Bluetooth during a call, go down to the headset, run a test, and then turn Bluetooth back on. And when we did these type of tests, the Bluetooth analysis, the, the voice quality of the Bluetooth, and the voice quality of the wired were similar, negligible differences. But we do offer both the Bluetooth connection as well as the wired headset connection. And uh, does each uh, V-Quad probe have uh, two independent Bluetooth connections or uh, it's different? Yeah, so each, uh, each uh, dual UTA, uh, so within the, within the V-Quad probe there is a dual UTA, and each dual UTA handles two fully independent and simultaneous devices. Um, and, and you can set up the device as two wire or four wire or Bluetooth or what have you. Uh, so within the WTA, there are two Bluetooth chips. Uh, each chip will handle one phone. Um, now, what's interesting, though, is you can pair as many phones as you want to the Bluetooth. Um, and you can only connect one at a time. But let's say you paired five phones to the Bluetooth chip. Uh, within the script, you can connect to phone one and uh, run your tests and then disconnect from phone one and then connect to phone two and run tests and do that throughout the five phones. Uh, so you can only connect once, but you can have multiple pairings. And all you have to do in the script is specify which phone you want to connect to now. And then you can start running the tests. And the Bluetooth uh, within our WTA supports um, uh, both narrowband and wideband. So we fully support uh, voice over LTE. We fully support 5G, um, uh, and, um, and you can also have up to six of the dual ETAs connected to the same system. So we've only been talking about one dual ETA connected. You can have up to six of these connected, so 12 phones, fully independent phones, and running different tests, any test you want, uh, at the same time. And one V-Quad can actually control another V-Quad. So in essence, um, you're unlimited to the number of devices you can be running. OK. Thank you, Rob. And we have another question from a customer. Uh, I'll just unmute him. Hello, Sentil. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So my question was uh, that does this voice testing algorithm also trace back the location of, say, for example, there's a conference call going on, and uh, on the call, if you want to test the uh, quality of the voice, uh, then does this algorithm also give you the uh, exact or pinpoint exact device or network which is causing the MOS code to lower down? So if it is happening, how is it happening? Okay, so, so what the... Um I think I followed your question, but what the, uh, the Polka algorithm does is it, it, it doesn't know what's in the network. It has no idea what's in the network. All it knows is the audio at the endpoint. So you're sending a recording audio at the endpoint. Um, basically, we are um, uh, mimicking what a person would be, what a person's mouth and ears would be at the phone. So we're able to send and record the voice at that point, and we're going to give a MOS score. We, it doesn't really know what's in the network. The only way that we can tell where the problem might be is, well, first of all, the, the, the Polka score is going to give, is going to, if it's if going to look at some of the other metrics, like the uh, uh, signal level and the noise level. and. We're going to look at the um, SNR. We're going to look at the delay measurements. Uh, maybe we're going to look at the frequency of the file. We can show that as well. So maybe what happened is uh, you're in a faulty network, but um, when we actually looked at the file, it was showing 3,700 hertz instead of in the 7,000 hertz range. So we know that it downsampled somewhere. It didn't, it didn't support, for instance, AMR wideband throughout the entire call. Somewhere a down sample. Well, that may be why your why your uh, your score dropped. So looking at all these other metrics, that's where you're really going to gain uh, what caused the the, uh, the the score to drop, 
and uh, then we have to do a little bit more investigation where exactly in the network that may be. Now, we do have other tools that can non-intrusively monitor within your network, and uh, so a combination of our, our VQuad product, which is the endpoint, and these other analysis or monitoring tools, non-intrusive monitoring tools, that will give you better insight as to where exactly the problem might be. All right. Okay. 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 All right. Let's continue. Okay. So, uh, so now we're going to get into uh, the data testing. So I talked about voice testing, and now with the data testing, basically what we have is we have an app for the phone. So we have an app for the uh, for the iPhone and the Android phone, and um, and we also have right from B Quad we have the ability to run a data test. Um, out whatever way the VQuad is going to the network, whether it's Ethernet or Wi-Fi or MiFi or what have you. But we have these different ways to connect to the Internet or to the network and run a variety of different data tests. And um, so you can see here we have wired and wireless, um, Internet. Uh, uh, you can do it in, your, in a closed network. Um, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter to us. Whatever way you want to test, you can test the the um, uh, the different uh, uh, types of data, and uh, this can all be performed directly from the phone or or from within VQuad, and all the results again go down to the central database uh, where we can query and filter. And I'll be showing you that a little bit later. Uh, but um, so as I mentioned, um, we have an app, and um, the app can be on a, a on any iOS device, so uh, an iPhone, an iPad, um, no problems. Um, and it can be on any Android device, uh, an Android phone, an Android tablet, an Android refrigerator, whatever you want to do. I, I have a, my TV has uh, Android OS, so I put the app on my TV, and whatever way my TV is going out to the internet, that's how I'm doing my tests. Um, so uh, for Android, I could put it on anything that's running the Android OS. And what the app does is it connects to our central system um, uh, or a, a central server. It's called the mobile device controller. And um, um, our VQuad also connects to that mobile device controller. So, um, so you can run a test, a, a data test directly from the app or you can remotely run it right from the VQuad. So the VQuad can actually control any of these phones, and the phones can be anywhere in the world, as long as they have internet connection and, and a, a, a connection to this mobile device controller server. Um, so um, once you have everything set up, the tests the test that you can run include a TCP tests, so you're basically getting speed of the network and uh, packet loss and uh, um, uh, round trip time and things like that. Uh, you can run a UDP test, or, which is giving you some capacity information. Um, you can run a VoIP test, simulated VoIP call. Uh, HTTP test, which is basically you're specifying a website, and you're going to that website from the app. And uh, you're performing, you're, well, you're basically bringing that website down, and, and we're going to tell you, well, did it work? Uh, what was the time for it? Were there any uh, retransmits, things like that? Um, an FTP test, both an upload and a download to any FTP server that you want. A DNS test, again, you specify the DNS server. Um, in addition to that, you can also do an SMS test, so send an SMS or receive an SMS. And an email test, send and receive email. Um, and um, we also can actually access the phone's information and provide you with uh, cell site information directly from the phone, uh, signal strength, um, um, uh, and other information about the network itself. It's not a lot of information there. Most of it's really used for the data side, but we can give you some information about the network itself. Um, so as mentioned, the phone, uh, uh, the phone is connected to this MDC, and um, uh, the MDC 
is actually basically uh, uh, maintaining the phone's uh, connection and uh, making sure that access to the phone is available. So you can see here we have several phones that are currently connected, showed by uh, the little green phone. Uh, the little, uh, this little phone here, which I think is red or I don't know what, what color that is. But uh, that's basically saying that that phone is connected, but it's in a suspend mode, meaning that um, rather than uh, being the phone being ready for test at any given point, it's on a 10-minute suspension. So every 10 minutes it's going to connect to the MDC, and that saves battery life and it saves data, things like that. And at any time, you can actually tell that phone to go back into an idle mode or a a uh, real-time type of test scenario. So we can actually we can take the phone uh, um, out of um, um, full-time test mode, uh, put it in suspend mode, and then put it back into full-time test mode at any point. Um, so and that can be done right from the V quad, right from the V quad script, or from the MDC, or directly from the app itself. And then you also see some phones that with the yellow that basically say, well, that phone is no longer connected, and we're waiting for a connection. So the, the app may have been turned off, or the phone may have been turned off, or what have you. Or the phone is in a, in a bad location. Now, the, the, the phone app, what's neat about the phone app is that it, um, or the, the net test app, is it's always running. So no matter what you do, if you put the app in the background, it's always running. Uh, if you turn the phone off and turn the phone back on, it's running. Uh, so uh, we spent a lot of time just making that set up so that no matter uh, when you want to run the, the net test, it's available to run. And you can run the net test and the voice test at the same time. So while you're in a voice call, run the net test, run a TCP test or an HTTP test um, and see what happens while you're in the voice call, what happens with the data? So run the, the net test before the um, um, uh, the voice call and then during the voice call. Uh, and basically, as mentioned, since the app is, or since the the um, the net test is an app on your phone, and you don't need any other equipment on your phone, you can be anywhere, in a bus, in a car, walking around put the phone in, the, in your pocket and walk around, and the test can just be running automatically. Um, so it's very portable, very flexible. Um, in fact, I did tests where I just threw a phone in my car. I drove from my house to the, um, uh, to the eastern shore, to the, to the beach area, and um, it's about a three-and-a-half-hour drive. And during that time, I was running tests every couple of minutes. And when I got to the beach, um, I brought up my, uh, my central database uh, using a, a, a web session called Web Viewer, which I'll get into in a few minutes. And I was able to plot my entire drive and show all my test points and whether they passed or failed and what happened during that test. So it's very easy to run, very easy to set up fully automated, or it can be manually as well. So at any point, you can just say, let me run a test. Let me run a speed test or what have you, OK? So now I'm going to get into uh, basically the last leg of this, which is the video testing. So um, uh, like the, um, the net test or the data testing, the video testing, we also have an app. And uh, that app can run on an Android phone. We don't have an app for the, uh, for the iPhone yet, but we do have an app for the Android phone. So for video testing, we're doing a video conference, basically uh, point A to point B. What is my video uh, a conference, sending video from A to B and sending video from B to A? How's my, how's my video? Uh, uh, and we're basically giving you uh, MOS scores mean opinion scores of the video plus a bunch of metrics. Um, so you're, you're running a test from uh, uh, the, the, the uh, video agents or video endpoints can be on an Android phone, a Windows PC, or a Linux system. Uh, so you're running a test from, for instance, an Android to a, to a Windows PC. 
and then getting the results. And what's nice about the video is you can actually configure what your video characteristics are. So you're not actually saying, okay, play this video uh, or you know, select a video from a, from a, um, uh, a log of different video, you know, uh, uh, saved videos that you have, saved video files that you have. You're actually creating what the video characteristics might be. Okay, so you're setting up the codec uh, for video, the, the video codec, the audio codec, the resolutions, the frame rates, rates all this information. You're creating what kind of video you want to send, along with how long you want the video to be, and you're saving it as a configuration. So when you select this configuration, you're going to send the video, again, bi-directionally between the two devices, and then come out with results. So you can have a, um, a uh, high-definition video test, and you can have a low-definition video test, depending on where you're running or what type of connection you have. To the network, and and as a um, as mentioned, you're going to get um, um, video MOS scores. You're going to get audio MOS scores. So so, and then the audio video or audio slash video MOS scores, uh, and you're also going to get a bunch of other information like packet loss and um, uh, discard rate and video bandwidth and things like that. So you're going to get a bunch of metrics. Uh, alongside the actual MOS scores. And as with the, um, with the data testing, since this is an app on your Android phone, you could be anywhere. You can walk, you can be in the car, bus, whatever, uh, and run these, um, uh, these video conference type testing. And the video testing and the data testing and the voice testing can all be running simultaneously on the same device. Not a problem. So now with all that information, all these different types of tests that you're running, and you're running all these tests automatically or remotely, um, all these results need to reside somewhere. So rather than having the results reside on different systems, and you have to go to this system for the video results, and this system for the data results, and here's the voice results, and so forth, we have a central database where everything converges. All the information, all the results, all the events, um, whether the, uh, you know, an event could be the call failed or the call dropped or the data didn't, didn't, uh, didn't work because there was no network. All that information gets sent to a central database where you then access it through uh, what we call our web viewer. So our web viewer is just a web browser uh, that can be run on any, any system including a PC or an iPad or an Android phone or what have you, whatever you want, um, you can, which, whatever way you connect to this uh, central system with your browser, you're going to bring up the web viewer and then you can um, uh, query and filter the results. And we have a bunch of different screens that you can then uh, view what is going on. We even have the ability to create custom reports. So um, uh, you can specify, OK, I want to see the call uh, control information, like place call, answer call, call fail, how many failed calls, how many drop calls, things like that, how many pass calls. Um, and I also want to see on the same screen um, uh, voice quality information. I want to see my delay information. And I want to see some HTTP testing information, because I did all that during my tests. And I ran this test in a loop for, um, well, I'm running it in a loop forever. OK, it just keeps running in a loop. So now you can say, OK, well, let's create a custom report for that. And the custom report will show all that information on a screen. And it may also show some graphics, like maybe a line graph with your voice quality analysis over time. And using this uh, new feature in our web viewer called Automated Schedule Reports, you can uh, specify when you want to create that report. Every morning at 8 a.m., I want to see the report. Or every Monday morning at 8 a.m., I want to see the report. Or once a month, whatever you want to do, once an hour, doesn't matter. 
you set up, that's when I want to see the reports. And then through the automated schedule report function, you can set up, send the reports to different email or SMS locations. Fully automated, um, so you can every morning or every week get a report of what's going on with your testing areas. And you can have as many of these schedule reports as you want. So different tests could be running. Uh, keep in mind that we, we can have many vQuads connected to the same uh, central system, and many different types of tests are running simultaneously. And each one will have different types of reports. So based on how you filter everything, you can have different reports and different schedules. So some of the screens that are coming out of the web viewer um, in, uh, um, so th this, for instance, this is your voice quality. Okay, so this is the Polka results. Um, and uh, all the screens, what you're doing is you can, you can see the screen, you can output the screen to PDF or Excel or any type of format. Uh, you can filter it on time. Here I'm looking at the last seven days. Or I can look at the last ten minutes or I can, I can say I want to look at from last Tuesday to yesterday. Um, doesn't matter. Uh, you can specify any type of time, uh, time filter. And you can specify other filters. Uh, I want to look at a specific um, uh, test or a specific device. Um, all this can be set up. And we can also show... Um, um, a graphic of your results. Here I'm showing a voice analysis graphic. So basically, the voice quality over time. Uh, and you can do this for any of the type of results. Uh, delay measurements over time, or, the, or a pie graph. Also pro provide you a pie graph, or bar graphs. All this can be set up, configured, and then output. So in this case, for instance, this uh, right here, you can see, well, the results are pretty consistent over time. However, these results are all over the place. You can see, well, with that test, maybe we had some issues. Um, call progress graphs, um, uh, basically placing calls, incoming calls, things like that. Uh, again, it's all user configurable. We have a lot of graphs and a lot of event screens that are um, default, but then you can configure whatever you want as well. Uh, for data testing, all the data information is available um, in the web viewer. And again, this is a default uh, data, uh, the net test result screen, uh, but you can take any of these results and put them into a custom report as well. And then here's some graphics for the data testing. And the whole point is it's very flexible. Very, very flexible. You can set up whatever you want. And the other thing in the web viewer, I don't think I have a screen for that, but another thing you have is you can see all your systems within the within your testing. So all the systems that are connected to the central system, you can bring up a screen and show all your systems. And then you can remotely control those systems directly from the web viewer. So the web viewer, using the web viewer, which is a web browser, you can control all of your other systems. Tell the system, load a script, start the script, stop the script, things like that. And um, this is the video testing results, so video quality, audio quality, uh, audio video quality, network health, things like that. So all this is available. And then finally, with the web viewer, you can uh, plot all your results with Google Maps. So here you can see I ran a test. This was all data testing, TCP, UDP, things like that. And I ran, this is actually in Washington, so this is the Washington Beltway. Uh, I drove up, uh, and I'm, I'm actually going up 95 uh, towards Pennsylvania in this test. Uh, so uh, you can see the different colors and what the different colors mean during this test. This was just a phone in the car running test, and then I plotted it on Google Maps. And it's just a click of a button to show the screen. And then finally, this is a another uh, Google Maps test. This was VQT polka results, uh, just going in a circle here uh, around um, uh, the uh, Washington, D.C. area. And uh, you can see here that 
my, my uh, points are a little bit different. Instead of a little pinpoint, there are flags where I can put words in them. So a lot, again, a lot of flexibility in the way you output the results. Okay, so if you have any questions, you're an attendee there, and we can, um, we can try to address that with Rob here. Uh, Rob, one question I have is, uh, uh, are you seeing a lot of requests for uh, wideband and super wideband testing? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, because the, um, well, for wideband, uh, that's voice over LTE, uh, voice over Wi-Fi, things like that. That's all wideband. And so it's very important, very important to do the wideband testing through either the Bluetooth, uh, connection or the headset connection. Um, now, super wideband, you're getting into uh, true voice, uh, the, the higher bandwidth of voice, and we are seeing that a little bit, we, and we can support super wideband through the wired headset. Uh, we don't support it through the Bluetooth because actually no Bluetooth chips right now support the super wideband, but we can support the super wideband. There's little call for that, but a lot of call for the wideband. Okay. I have uh, one more question. Uh, in a multiple node deployment, probes can be remotely controlled from a central point? I mean, uh, they don't need to be uh, manned, right? Uh, yes, yeah, so, so, so all of the, uh, the nodes out there, all the vQuad uh, probe nodes can be controlled from a central system or from any system to, be, to, 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 to that matter. So um, the, the, the nodes can absolutely be um, unmanned. Uh, they could be in a in a car, unmanned, driving around. We can control it. We can tell the device to start a test or stop a test or load a test, and uh, also get all the results from that from those tests. And with the with the with the uh, net test, the, the data testing or the video testing, um, we're controlling those phones from anywhere as well. Uh, so remote controlling everything. Uh, that's a big thing for us is remote control and automation, and uh, um, making sure all the information, all the results come back to a central database. That's what we uh, make, that, that's a real uh, major part of our full overall solution. Okay, very good. But that concludes the webinar. And if, and if anybody wants to get a, a demo, um, uh, basically like a uh, um, direct uh, go to meeting demo or something, just let us know and we can provide that, not a problem to show you what the software looks like, whether it's the, the voice testing, the data testing, the video testing, or all three. We can show you how that looks, how that works, and how that might uh, help you in, uh, help you or your customers in, in the, uh, the overall testing environment. And even uh, they can send uh, uh, their questions to info at gl.com and we'll reply back to that. Definitely, yes. So I think that concludes everything for today. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Sanjeev. And um, check back on our website. Uh, we'll be doing a monthly webinar. So a uh, new topic will be posted shortly uh, for July. And uh, look forward to seeing you there.